soil, air, water. When we scour the cosmos, this is what we seek. The ingredients and evidence of life. We can't always see them or what's in them, but they're always there, all around us. But did you ever wonder how our air and water stays clean and safe for life on Earth? Well, to understand that, we're going to have to dig a little deeper. All the oxygen you've ever breathed and water you've ever drank has cycled through soil at some point in time. Soils are the lungs, liver, and kidneys of the earth, purifying the air and water we all depend upon. But it hasn't always been like this. For billions of years, earth was just a barren rock, a little too hot and gassy to support life on land. But as microbes and plants emerged in the oceans, they pulled carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and into their bodies. And as they grew and died, they sank to the ocean floor, buried under layer after layer of sediment, and eventually enough heat and pressure to form oil. As things cooled down on Earth, life finally made its way onto land, accelerating the breakdown of rocks into smaller and smaller pieces. Soil, the smallest pieces, clays, carried an electrical charge and could hold onto water and nutrients, allowing life on Earth to explode, pulling billions more tons of carbon out of the atmosphere and into everything from microbes to plants, insects, animals, and eventually humans. As the cycle of growth and decay continued, carbon began building up in the soil as well bound to clays or trapped inside of soil aggregates not to return to the atmosphere for hundreds to thousands of years. But when we broke ground for agriculture, we began to tip the scales. Each turn of the plow injected a fresh burst of oxygen, revving up soil microbes and releasing billions of tons of carbon back to the atmosphere. With the discovery of oil and gas, we tipped the scales even more. But while more carbon in the atmosphere is a problem for the global thermostat, more carbon in soil is a win-win for people and the planet. Whether sandy or clay, more soil carbon means more water can infiltrate instead of running off, moving through the soil profile before returning to the aquifer, which we pump to drink. In fact, more water runs through soil than all the rivers in the world, and as it does, Clays and organic matter remove heavy metals and organic contaminants. Microbes also play a role, transforming or breaking toxins down into less or non-toxic forms. But if water moves through the soil too fast, or there's too much or too toxic a contaminant, we can easily overload the system. When infiltration is restricted by compaction or paved ground, water runs off and into our waterways, often carrying soil, nutrients, and industrial chemicals along with it, impacting fisheries, communities, and the environment downstream. Cities and towns are helping by transitioning from pavement to more porous surfaces, like permeable pavers, green roofs, and rain capture gardens. Urban planners and land managers are using soil knowledge to choose more water and climate smart plants, and to keep the soil covered as much as possible. And each of us can do our part, by supporting farmers and ranchers who are improving soil health, advocating for farmland and forest conservation, or maybe even discovering a novel microbe that revolutionizes water treatment, breaks down biosolids, or restores degraded lands. Soil, air, water, it's all connected. And what happens upwind and upstream affects us all. Click the link below to get involved. The future of your planet depends upon it.